Hello, it's Tony Gonzalez from Made in Metal. And today we are going to interview Ben on Prison, who recently released a new CD called Erebus. Oh, we are going to interview the guitar player, Ash Gray. How are you, Ash? I'm good, thank you. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. So my first question is a curiosity to me. How a band from Wales decide to get in the band a woman from Russia? Um, we've all been in bands prior to Venom Prison and we were all touring quite a lot. Um, and I think we all kind of knew each other, like Ben, our guitarist. He lives in a town not far from mine and our bands were always playing together. Same with Ben's band was playing with Larissa's quite a lot, touring and Europe, UK shows. And I think everyone just got to know each other through the years of like touring. And then we kind of came to an end with those bands and we just decided to put Venom Prison together. And that's pretty much how it come to life, to be honest. Have you seen Larissa singing before Venom Prison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The band that she was in, she was also in a band before Venom Prison as well, which was touring loads, you know. So it was, yeah, it was, we always knew, we always knew each other and everyone always kind of knew what everyone did in their previous bands and everything. So I think it was just one of those things where everything just lined up perfectly in time. You know, I, I wasn't in my band anymore at the time. Well, my previous band and same with Ben and Mike and Joe and Larissa as well. And I think it just kind of lined up perfectly. Like there's no real like, you know, definitive story to it other than it was just like everyone just come out of bands and was like, hey, do you want to give it another go? And that's kind of where it really started to come together, you know? Yes, Ash, it was a good movement to take her in the in the band because she sings spectacular. I enjoy a lot. And uh, from this CD, something that I enjoy a lot is the CD cover made by Eliran Cantor. That is awesome. So tell me about the idea and its relation with the music. We, so we've been working with Eliran for quite some time now. We worked with him on our first album. So it's been three records now that we've done with him. And it's always so great to work with him. Like our ideas connect so perfectly together and we'll do pre-production on the album, whether I record it at my place or Ben's place. And then there is all demo vocals on it onto the record or the pre-production. And then we kind of send it to Eloran and give him the lyrics and we give him the pre-productions of all the songs that have been demoed. And we kind of just leave him to sit with it for a couple of weeks, you know, to get comfortable listening over and over again. And he'll normally take a passage of lyrics from some point in the album and kind of has this idea of like the imagery of it wanting to round itself off as one whole, you know, like image that kind of almost brings that idea of like what Erebus sounds and looks like imagery. And I think he's always very good at capturing it. Like the first moment I seen the sketches, it, it felt very, you look at it and you, even when you look at the artwork, you feel very isolated and, yeah it's certainly a powerful cover like i remember when we first got the physicals of the vinyl come through and i just like stayed at it for you know a good 10 20 minutes and i was just like this is pretty intense it's working it's really capturing those lyrics and that sound to this record perfectly and it's almost like you can hear the album when you look at the artwork i imagine when i see the cover that uh those two women are between dead people, maybe in an open grave or something. One of them is trying to control the other, who is uh, in panic. Yes. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's a nice one because like, it, I think the cool thing when we were talking about when the artwork was kind of done is that there's so many, because it, the whole idea of Erebus is for everything in Erebus to be linked to the idea of something born from chaos the interpretation of when you look at you know those eyes on the record and like everyone's interpretation of it is going to be slightly different because somebody else you know someone feels something from it that may not be the same feeling that everyone else is getting and I think maybe there's past experiences that kind of like make you feel that there's like that isolation and that feeling and 
that's kind of what I really liked about it is how like we left it so open where the you know those two like the eyes and the desperation of the two people like everyone goes through that desperation and suffering in different ways so however you interpret it is still the same meaning as no matter what the other person will interpret so I really liked the idea that it was kind of it was an open book almost. So uh, I'm living from Madrid but my co-workers are from Bilbao and they were a in a concert when you were here in Spain supporting Trivium in 2018. And the people there in Bilbao still remember the concert, the power and energy, and energy. They don't forget the voice of Larissa. Do you remember this tour? Can you tell us yeah. something about it? Yes. Yeah, I remember, I remember the tour very well. Like, yeah, that, that tour was really good. And I think it was great because we had the opportunity to come to places that we hadn't had chance to explore or, you know, maybe there was an, a tour that we had gone on in the past that had gone through that way. So it was really nice to be able to actually have the chance to go there. And then when we played um, Resurrection Fest, yes, um, like what an incredible festival. Like that was, um, that was such, when we played Resurrection Festival, that was so good for us. That was after the Trivium tour. Um, but the, the, the crowd and the reaction was like great and I, I was saying to someone not long ago like we we are already like looking to kind of come back to that because it was it was really good so yeah we we definitely do remember and are aware that we kind of want to come back because I'd resurrection fest and you know some dates around that I think would be super cool and it's something that I've brought up numerous amount of times now <laughs> Yes, we will be happy to receive the band again, of course. So I would like to ask you about some songs in the in the CD that uh, to me were really curious. And I'm going to start talking about Pain of Oasis that yeah, is, yeah. because the song is completely different and you even selected is even when the song is completely different, you select it as a single and video. Tell me why. Um, I think it was because we really, we had said a lot in the past that we would never do the same record twice. Like Animus doesn't sound like Samsara and Samsara certainly doesn't sound like Erebus. And we were saying to interviews and press before we started recording and like the build up to that we were going back into the studio and people were like, what, what's it going to be like? And then I remember saying it won't be the same. Like you, it'll be Venom Prison. You'll hear that core sound. You'll hear everything about it that makes a Venom Prison song, but it won't be a song that you will be familiar with. And I think that's why we chose it to be single too, because it was almost a way of saying, hey, we're serious. We did say we're not, you know, and I think, I think people kind of appreciated that in a way, like the response to it wasn't negative at all. It was all very positive and it was the most, you know, diverse, different direction song we had done, but everyone was kind of like, well, they did say they were going to do that. And I think that's kind of like, I think that's kind of what worked really well is that we said, yeah, we'll do something different. We know, we know what's important about Venom Prison, but we're certainly becoming cleverer with finding ways to kind of make it more creative and add lots more depth and layers. And like, even as soon as we left the studio from Erebus, me and Ben were already talking about new songs and, you know, how we were going to build a new additional layer to Venom Prison and what we would introduce. But I think the, the real good thing about that is we're very, and this, this counts for all of, Erebus, not just Pain of Oises, but we're very good at being sparing with those moments. We don't force a new influence or a new layer or a new thing onto the listeners. We kind of sparingly use it and introduce it as a new element to the band. And I think a lot of bands that kind of use that statement of, oh, we're going to change our sound. We're going for a different direction and all that. And we never said that. We just said it won't be the same song you've heard before and Pain of Oises was the reason it was number two yeah that was the exact reason why 
if you think of what the people say, you know that all the time will be extremists that say, oh, the money is, is, is sold, the money is sold. But no, I think not. But uh, on the other hand, if you are thinking of this person, you will never grow up as a band. You will yep. be playing every day the same songs. And that's what some, some people, not what the people wants, is what some people wants. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And I also felt that, and this is relating to Pain of Oises, of when we when we were over, I remember we were over Ben's, it was me, myself and Mike, our bassist, and we were in the demo period of writing Pain of Oises. And I remember just our bassist saying, he was like, when did metal bands stop writing songs like this? And I was like, what, what do you mean? And he was like, well, nobody, no one ever complained about Metallica's Nothing Else Matters or Ozzy Osbourne's Killer of Giants. In fact, all of Ozzy Osbourne's, you know, catalogue that wasn't with Sabbath was all ballads. And, you know, that's the type of music I listen to. I always have. And, you know, it, when people try and use like that deathcore label on us, it, 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 it's quite confusing because I don't really know what, they refer I, I know what I know what type of band is deathcore. Like, you know, I haven't been living under a rock. Like I know I know what it is, but when I listen to Venom Prison, I I don't hear that. I don't hear it. All I hear is like metal, you know, like I, I obviously know there's the subgenres of, you know, is it death metal, is it black metal, is it this, is it that? But ultimately we went into Erebus just saying, let's make a metal record, and that was it. So something that I like it about the video, apart from the music, the actress, are the landscape. So and now you tell me that this landscape was, was around the corner of your house. Our video guy, well, our friend, uh, Tom, he lives in Brighton. And it, it, was in, it was not far, well, it was pretty much outside is where he lives in Brighton, essentially. But yeah, it, Brighton's a very, very nice, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful place, really is. Yes, when, when I see uh, those landscapes, I imagine, say, this is the reason why the people who live there are different than the people who live here. <laughs> no, it's like where I live, I live in like Wales and I mean, it, it's, you know, I, I live very close to lots of fields and and mountains and you know they I drive to the waterfalls quite regularly and stuff and yeah it, it's it, it's a it's it's certainly a quieter life <laughs> uh, I let's go back to the let's go back to Erebus because there is another song that I like it even more that is Nemesis mm. it is the, the video so this video is totally crazy Totally, totally crazy. <laughs> tell me, tell me about the, the, the song and the video, please. So basically, the way we approached it is we brought in Jonathan, who was in Judges of the Underworld. He was the actor in Judges of the Underworld. And obviously, we had Tony, who was in Pain of Oise. And we wanted to bring them back for Nemesis, like both of them in that one video, just to make people aware that it was the same you know the same universe it's not like we're not trying to do some marvel shit it's just like yeah it was just like we wanted to know that they do have relations to each other and i i like the idea of with the lyrics for nemesis it's you know it's very aggressive and out there but i also remember speaking to tom brooker the video guy and i said to him i don't want any gore or violence or blood or anything like that and he was like well what do we do to the guy that you know how, how does he become a damaged one mm -hmm. and I kind of left the idea like we left the idea with him to sit with and kind of come out with what he was going to come out with and stuff and then he sent us the video as we didn't even know what else had gone on other than the last conversation we had and um yeah it it, it come into a very totally crazy way where like there's a lot of um yeah it, there's a lot of spiritualness going on in there to cause thing but 
it was nice because even though it does make it crazy as such, I like the fact that we completely dodged like having the blood and the gore and the the, the you know what I mean? Like we didn't want to make it like anything typical as in like, oh, you're a death metal band. There should probably be some blood and a hammer. And I'm like, oh, don't know. Yeah, don't know. We could, we could do other things, I guess. And I think that's kind of how Nemesis really, the, the implications and what it's implying is still exactly the same. It is hurting someone. But I think the fact we're not visually showing it, just same again, it's, it leaves that nice openness of interpretation for like viewers and listeners. Sometimes I think when everything becomes so transparent, there's no real creativity behind it and it loses the beauty of what what is this? You know what I mean? Rather than going, I know what it is. And if you know what everything is, then it becomes boring, doesn't it? I think that uh, the whole CD is open to interpretation. So the man who wrote the review uh, from Made in Metal ends the review saying that Erebus is an uncomfortable CD to listen to. So do you agree? 100%, 100%. Yes. It, was, it was very, yeah, it, it knows where to pull in certain places of the record. And yeah, it, that, that seems to be one thing we managed to accomplish in records is we know weird dynamics and and the things to make the listener feel uncomfortable in certain points but then i think erebus does it in a more haunting way because there's so much more melody and so much more um you know clean and lightness to it that when those darker moments come it does make it a lot more harrowing and like i i do feel that's what makes it even more uncomfortable because you think you know you go from comfort of complicity where you've got you know straight fast metal into like a big major key prog twin solo section into pain of oises which is piano and electronics and then somehow you get to golden apples which is just a crushing you know death metal blast song and it it just makes it, it plays with those emotions doesn't it and i think we we like the idea of that i think it makes a record have more feel and more emotion. Ash, tell me, are you already touring UK and you have planned, do you have planned to come to Europe? Um, so funny you mention it, I've been talking about that today actually. Um, we have our summer festivals booked. Um, we will be planning some stuff around the later half of the year. Um, but I think at the moment, I've been saying this quite a bit that we're still quite creative at the moment and me and Ben have been talking about things that we would like to do to like almost support Erebus and interlink with it like in you know without giving too much away like I'd like to keep that creativity going and see if there's some concepts behind Erebus that can link into it and be new and just keep that going because I feel like it's putting the band in a good place and it's putting the band in a more better place and we're learning every time we're doing these things and I think just giving us that little bit more time to carry on being creative could like really you know be very beneficial for Venom Prison moving forward as a band like record after record because we don't want it to be the case of this is the problem that we've always faced as a band is that everyone keeps telling us every record we do is our best record so it's like it's really difficult because it's like animus oh it's the best debut i've viewed in years and then samsara this is the best follow-up record i've viewed and then we get to erebus and it's like this is the best and it's like you do realize i've got to try and think about how the fuck i write a better record each time and I wouldn't, I don't want to backstep on that. I, I do want to move forward and I do want to make sure that we keep writing better and bigger records each time. And if it means that that creativity is still there and it's still working, I think it's wise to play on that for a little bit longer rather than jumping on tours and then kind of forgetting everything that we were on to and everything we were doing. And then we get back and then it's like, oh, 
where do we start with the writing process? And that's <clears throat> that's the kind of always been the problem is write, tour, record, write, tour, record. And then like, even when you go to the studio, sometimes you've got some of your best ideas come in and you're like, oh, well, I'm going on tour for eight weeks now. I'm never going to remember that ever again. And I just feel like that, if, the way Erebus has turned out, I'm just not sure I'm okay with just letting that creativity go right now. I feel like it's an important time to capitalize on it and see what we can come up as with a band and see what boundaries we can keep pushing, you know? Yes. So, uh, Ash, time will tell if Erebus is going to be a good uh, product, a good music or not. Because Erebus is not the CD that you play and at the first moment you say, wow, this is awesome. No, you need to taste. You need to taste. Yes. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you've got many, di there's a lot of dissecting going on with that record you need to very it's almost like it doesn't want you to know what's going on it wants you to pay attention to it which i find is why it's not that pop catch so as uh, this was basically our questions and if you want to say something to the spanish fans and then we say goodbye Erebus is out now. Make sure you check it out, I guess, and we'll, we'll be on the road for sure soon. It's something that we are talking about and working on and stuff. So I don't want people to think that we're not doing shows. We definitely are. It's just maybe not right at this exact moment, you know. But other than that, check out Erebus and thank you for having me. Yes, thank you very much to you for your time, your answer. So I enjoy this conversation and discover new things about uh, Airbus and the band. So it was Tony Gonzalez talking to Ask Gray from Venom Prison, introducing the new CD, Airbus. Bye bye, Ash. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. You too. You too. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>